street, don't be slow. Why, man, this war a go-go. There's plenty good money to be made by supplying the army with the tools of a trade. Just hope and pray that if they drop the bomb, drop it on the Viet Cong. And it's one, two, three, what are we fighting for? Don't ask me, I don't give a damn. The next stop is Vietnam. And it's five, six, seven, open up the pearly gates. Well, there ain't no time. Maya Lin is an American designer. She works primarily in landscape architecture and memorials. She's Chinese-American. Her parents emigrated from China in 1949. Um, the two of them were both intellectuals, we might say, and left the country as communism took over and settled in Athens, Ohio. The story of how Mylin uh, became, became the designer of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial is basically unbelievable. It's a sort of fairy tale uh, which could only happen under very specific conditions. First of all, she was enrolled at Yale in a landscape design course. 21, she decided to enter a competition that was being held, uh, sponsored by the Vietnam Veterans Association, who were looking for a memorial to be placed on the mall in Washington, D.C., at the heart of the nation's capital, to commemorate uh, those of their comrades who had fallen in the war. First of all, it had to be anonymous. So all entrants conformed to the same conditions and were given a number when they submitted. What this meant for Maya Lin, of course, was that her identity was concealed. It wasn't clear that she was only 21, still a student, Chinese-American, a woman. None of this was clear. Uh, and she won. Uh, she submitted her design, and it was chosen by a very distinguished panel of architects who met, and out of the more than a 1,000 entrants, chose her design. Maya Lin's solution for the Vietnam Veterans Memorial is deceptively simple. What one sees at first is simply two polished black granite slabs, somber in color, uh, sunken into the ground that slowly rise to form a chevron which meets in the middle. Here at your feet is the date 1975, uh, and then above your head, 10 feet tall, is the date 1959. And then your experience of the clock of war, the pace of war, the sequence of deaths begins, but you can't finish your experience of the memorial without following the deaths tapering out and then going back and retracing your steps uh, where you sort of entered kind of midstream, as it were, and then watching the uh, chevron grow until you reach the chronological end of the war. In deciding how the memorial should proceed, Lynn had to decide how to display the names of the dead. It's one of the most important decisions that goes into her design, and her decision uh, breaks with common convention. She was faithful to the information that she had about the precise day, not the year, not the month, but the precise day on which the death occurred. And so the names that are carved into those black walls adhere uh, religiously to a timetable of their deaths, a kind of clock of death, if you will. And it means that all we know about the identities of the men who died is the fact of their death. We don't know how old they were. We don't know their rank. Uh, we don't know, in other words, there's nothing of the uh, interior structure of the military, nothing about their achievements there. That's all immaterial. All that matters is when they met their end. If you reflect on 
of an aspect of, of war in human life, not just American culture. Um, humans are combative. They kill. And um, this is why war is so abhorrent to so many people. And this is why the Vietnam Veterans Memorial uh, seems to me to be so effective. Lynn's Memorial uh, stands for so many people um, as one of the great achievements of sculptural art and one of the greatest memorials that we know humans to have made. Having created a winning design and won because it was an anonymous competition, Myelin had many problems. She was young, she was just 21, and she had had absolutely no experience of the war. Although she was an American citizen born in this country, she was an Asian American citizen, very much marked by that Asian identity. And to some people who were struck by her lack of qualification, her origins even further disqualified her. She didn't know the ropes of Washington. She began by coming in her blue jeans, her normal campus wear, and soon realized that if you're a kid sitting at a table with men in suits, this won't do. And she was adamant that this opportunity to realize this design not be stolen away from her, uh, no matter how harsh uh, the criticisms and how strong the opposition uh, that she received. The abstraction of this design really stuck in people's throats. It seemed too radical and too exclusive, perhaps. It didn't image suffering, or so the critics uh, claimed. There was no plinth on which heroes stood. This uh, criticism, sadly or maybe inevitably enough was voiced from the right. Um, a billionaire, soon to be presidential candidate, H. Ross Perot, um, funded an, the opposition to the memorial, trying to get it stopped. It was also opposed by James Watt, who as Secretary of the Interior was in charge of the very service, the park service, uh, which was tending this memorial. Uh, there was Phyllis Shafley, who was a pillar of the moral majority, an anti-feminist as well. And then uh, the conservative journalist, Tom Wolfe, uh, who certainly knew how to make a lot of noise. The result of this is that another commission for what we might call a counter monument or an anti monument was launched and that commission was given to a figurative sculptor called Frederick Hart who interestingly had also submitted to the competition that Maya Lin won. The committee to stop the Maya Lin design went to Hart uh, to ask him to realize his design, which he did, and it was erected. It is a highly traditional bronze of three standing soldiers, and moreover, uh, it represents uh, these men as stunningly handsome, beautifully muscled, and turned out with um, what was uh, faithful copies of authentic battle gear, its terms are so expectable, they're so Hollywood, they're so, what we might say, pro provided. They are, uh, they do our thinking for us, uh, which is a way for, of saying that they are deeply kitsch. The men who fought in Vietnam um, included my contemporaries. I vividly remember the draft I remember the anxiety that the draft lottery uh, provoked in the, all the guys that I knew. Uh, I remember the um, need to protest against the Vietnam War. 
I remember um, thinking about what was happening to my stepbrother who was in Vietnam in a helicopter. I think of this war as having been particularly wounding for the United States, not just because we lost, uh, but because it was so divisive. An entire nation must stand behind it. It must believe that something matters, that life is worth sacrificing, uh, that the war in Vietnam, which was so, so tragic for the country, and that such a war should never have been fought.